Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the ribbon cutting ceremony for the industrial maintenance program at Don Tyson School of Innovation. This program be began through a collaborative vision and you helped make this possible. We are blessed to live in a community and state where our business and industry leaders identify a need and work with the public school system to prepare students to fill that need. Thank you for being here today as we see the product of a strong community and the value of partnerships. At this time, I invite student representatives from our FFA chapter, Alex Escobar, Narelle Trevino, and Emily Wilson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to recognize and thank our superintendent, Dr. Jared Cleveland, for his support and welcome him to the podium. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Don Tyson School of Innovation on a cloudy, rainy day. See some wonderful people in the audience and I want to thank you for your support for the school and for coming out to participate in what is an historic and monumental day for Springdale School District at large and certainly for Don Tyson School of Innovation. This school, based on Dr. Rollins' vision years ago in a very smart and courageous school board, because that's what it takes in today's world to compete, built this school on partnerships. The definition of partnerships is two or more people coming together with a common goal, and that's what this is, every day, all day long. One of our main and most instrumental partners is Tyson Foods. We're thankful for Tyson Foods, the Tyson family, and their investment in our school district as a whole, and certainly Don Tyson School Innovation. Today we have Mr. Archer Sha Archie Schaefer, who's representing the family, thank you. We also have Mr. Ross Dunn from Corporate Relations. Thank you so much for attending. I'd like to recognize today our school board, and they're in the room. I won't make them stand up, but I know I saw Ms. Cook, who's our board president, Ms. Michelle Cook, Ms. Debbie Creek, also on the school board, Mr. Randy Hutchison, Mr. Clinton Bell, Mr. Kevin Owenby, Mr. Nick Emerson, and we also have Mr. Eddie Ramos. There are outstanding individuals who invest their time and their resources every day to make sure this school district and this school, Don Tyson School of Innovation, continues to produce great work. We also have our district administration here. I saw Dr. Smith, she's our associate superintendent. I saw Ms. Tisher and Ms. Fink in the back of the room. Thank you for being here. Ms. Kendra Clay, who's our general counsel. Mr. Kelly Hayes, and certainly Mr. Jeremy White, our support services director. I also saw some other principals and assistant principals. Ms. Kelly Bortz, a visionary in her own work, especially in CTE work. We have her assistants, and we're thankful they're here and supporting this school. We're going to get to listen to our lieutenant governor, Mr. Tim Griffin, a little bit, and I look forward to his remarks. He came all the way from Little Rock, so thank you for being here today. We have Mr. Doug Sprouse, our mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Doug Sprouse is everywhere. Anytime there's a celebration for a school, he's there. He loves this district, loves this school district, and loves his city, and we're thankful for that. I believe I saw Mr. Eads, Senator Eads here. We also have additional state representatives, Ms. Megan Godfrey, Ms. Robin Lundstrom, Mr. Clint Pinzo. Thank you for your partnership and your continued support. Nationally, Mr. Jeff Thacker, representative from Congressman Womack's office, and Ms. Stephanie Blevins from the governor's office, thank you for taking time out of your day to come celebrate with us. From our chamber, Mr. Perry Webb and Mr. Bill Rogers are also here. And we have Andrew Parker from the Arkansas Chamber. Again, thank you for your time. Additionally, Stephanie Isaacs and Cody Waits from the Office of Skills Development. There is a gentleman, though, that I haven't recognized yet that must be recognized. 
former superintendent, current president of Northwest Technical Institute, our Dr. Jim Rollins. I am going to have him stand up. Thank you, Dr. Rollins. If it wasn't for Dr. Rollins and his vision of what not only the district would look like, but Don Tyson School of Innovation, uh, he developed this idea along with his core team, probably from a tractor seat on a farm. Uh, we've gotten several opportunities to, to get his feed sack with handwritten scribble on there that he had to interpret, but Don Tyson School of Innovation and the partnerships that he was able to develop is the reason why we're here today. Two gentlemen that I visited with early. This facility doesn't just happen. It takes leadership with an architect and with a construction firm. We have Mr. Scott Copas, Mr. Patrick Tenney from Baldwin Shell. They have lived this journey with us. And without you gentlemen, this facility wouldn't be here for our students today. So thank you so much. Some major players from Tyson Foods that helped think and dream is Mr. Mike Rogers. He's the Director of Maintenance and Refrigeration for Tyson Foods, and Mr. Rodney Ellis, the Technical Education Liaison for Tyson Foods. Wonderful people working every day to not only further opportunities for students, but it furthers opportunities for our region, our state, and our nation. Because as students begin to have credentialing, and opportunities to earn wages early, then it opens up their, their chance for not only survival in a strange world, but it provides them an opportunity to have a leg up quicker, more quickly. They're able to, to earn and be a portion of a community that serves others. Mr. Wes Higgins is our industrial maintenance instructor, and Ms. Kelly Williamson is our district CTE coordinator. So I saw her, she's around, very appreciative of her work. Mr. Rodney Ellis, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, will visit with you a little bit later about the program support. An example of program support from the advisory council is Mr. Chris Chandler, the Springdale Bulldog, born and raised here, and he's reinvesting himself and his company's resources into our school. So we're thank you, uh, really appreciative. I'd like to introduce our speaker because you didn't come here to listen to me. Our Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Tim Griffin, grew up in Magnolia. He is a fifth generation Arkansan and the youngest son of a minister and his teacher. He was elected Lieutenant Governor of Arkansas on November 4th, 2014, and was reelected for his second four year term on November 6th, 2018. He's focused on growing jobs through aggressively pursuing economic development more parental choice in education and boldly reforming state government. For 2019, he's serving as chairman of the Republican Lieutenant Governors Association nationally. Lieutenant Griffin has served as an officer in the U.S. Army Reserve, Judge Advocate General's JAG Corps, over 23 years and currently holds the rank of Colonel. In 2005, Griffin was mobilized to active duty as an Army prosecutor at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And he served with the 101st Airborne Division in Iraq, for which he was awarded the Combat Action Badge. He is currently serving as the commander of the 134th Legal Operations Department in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Prior to his current post, Griffin served as Senior Legislative Advisor to the Undersecretary of Defense for Personnel in readiness at the Pentagon. In July 2018, Lieutenant Governor Griffin, in his capacity as Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army Reserve, received his master's degree in strategic studies as a distinguished graduate from the United States Army War College. He graduated from Magnolia High School, Hendricks College in Conway, and Tulane Law School in New Orleans, and he attended graduate school at Oxford University in England. His wife, Elizabeth, is from Camden, and they currently live in Little Rock with their three children, Mary Catherine, John, and Charlotte Ann. They are members of Emanuel Baptist Church of Little Rock. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin. Thank you. Thank you all for letting me be a part of this.
You know, this is exactly what we ought to be doing a thousand times over uh, in Arkansas, maybe 2,000 times over. We need something like this in every community in the state. And for some of you younger folks, I used to think I was younger, but I'm starting to learn that, uh, that I'm not. And so I want to just talk to you younger folks for a little bit and tell you what it used to be like. So I graduated from Magnolia High School in 1986. And things in a lot of, in, in a lot of schools in the state, uh, some of the things that hadn't changed since then were just now starting to change. But when I grew up, there were really two tracks. Everybody was pushed, they were pushed into the four-year college track or other. And that's just the way it was. And so whether you really wanted to go get your four-year college degree or not, you felt a cultural pressure to do that. And many people did that not because it was their passion, but because society sort of pushed them down that path. Now, what happens when people get pushed down a path and their heart's not there? Well, they're not happy. Maybe they don't finish that path. Maybe they build up a bunch of debt and don't finish that path. There's a lot of things that don't go right. And those other folks who did not want to go to pursue a four-year degree, they were often made to feel like they were somehow on a lesser path, which is false. See, I believe, and I've believed all my life, that everybody's special, created by God with unique gifts. And for years, society said, we're not really worried about what your gifts are. You just need to get with the program and fit into our model. Now, because we've had to change to compete, our system is one that says, hey, we want to meet you where your passion is. It's not either or, it's a spectrum. It may be that you learn your vocation or your career, your profession in high school. Maybe you continue on and get a certificate. Maybe it's two years. Maybe it's four years. Maybe you keep going. But it's not one or the other. There's a spectrum, and you can find where you feel like you belong along that spectrum in a place that matches your passion. You know what happens when people are doing jobs that don't match their passion? Let me tell you, they're not as happy. They change jobs more. They don't make as much money. They're not as successful. So we have every reason to meet people where they are and not the other way around. And that's what you're doing here. You're saying, hey, a lot of us want to go get a four-year degree. That's great. But a lot of people want to do something else. And you know what? Can make a good living doing it and can build on it. You can, learn, you can learn skills in this industrial maintenance program and in many other programs that are not the end of the road. You can build on it for later. And let me tell you another big difference today. It used to be that a lot of schools put students out for the private sector to hire and never asked the private sector what they needed. They just said, here you go, here are our graduates. And you know, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. And when the world was a lot less complex, it worked better. But now we have so much complexity, so much technology. People need to specialize. And I've heard from a lot of companies for years, they were looking around. Mike, you and I have talked about this. By the way, if I see Mike in an event, I know it's, I know it's a good thing. I just look for Mike and then I know we're on track, right? But for years, companies, the ones that grow the jobs, Tyson and others, they're looking around going, you know, we're not really getting the graduates we need. In fact, graduates or not, we're not getting the workers we need. We can't grow if we don't have the people to do the jobs. And this is particularly so in the STEM arena. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Not just Arkansas, but the country as a whole has been behind for years. 
So at some point, the private sector said, well, if the schools aren't going to train them, we're going to do it. And that's exactly, Mike, what you've been involved in. But thank goodness, now we have these partnerships. We have schools coming together with companies and other private sector partners working together to both train and educate on the one hand, and get people ready for those jobs. That's what we're doing now, and it's changed a lot. And I, I, that's why I go to communities and say, if you're, if an educational institution is planning some sort of program, training program, industrial maintenance or whatever, and you don't have a private sector part, partner involved, then you're not doing it right. You've got to partner with the people that are gonna do the hiring to make sure there is a marriage that is productive and works. We don't produce students the way we want them, want them without regard to the people hiring. That's ridiculous. So this partnership is so effective because the schools, incredible, innovative, you're so innovative it's in your name. Schools like this are working with the folks that are going to do the hiring on the other end. So you know what that guarantees? It guarantees that what's being taught here is relevant. It's relevant to today's economy. As long as you have an ongoing conversation with your partners who do the hiring, you will not spend time focused on the teaching and training of curriculum that doesn't fit the times. This is precisely what we need more of around the state. Seriously, you are, and I've toured a lot of these, you've been at some of those other ones, but I'll just tell you, there, I haven't seen anything like this. This is a whole other level. For a little bit there, I thought I was at a university. I mean, this is a really, this is, this is the nicest, most equipped, most modern facility of this type that I've seen. And not every community can have this, but you can serve as a beacon, as an example of what the other schools in the rest of the state should be aiming toward. And I hope you do that, and I'm sure you are, because there's a lot of folks in this state who need to interact with this school and your leadership so they at least know what to aim for. If we're going to compete internationally and if we're going to compete with Texas, Oklahoma and our neighbors or anybody else, we got to do more of this. Congratulations. Thanks to Tyson and everybody who's been a part of this. This is really, really, really something to be proud of. This would make us proud in, in any part of the country. This is a big deal. Thank you all for letting me be a part of this. I am honored and keep doing what you're doing. God bless you all. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, my name is Amy Harrison, and I'm one of the assistant principals here over the career and technical programs at our school. And it is my pleasure to introduce Mike Rogers, the Senior Director of Maintenance and Refrigeration at Tyson F Foods. Please help me welcome Mr. Rogers to the podium. This is a privilege just getting to take the mask off for a minute. And to speak to this group right here, wow, this is who I'm here for. You young folks that have all your future in advance. Uh, you listen to people talk about making plans for you and the different opportunities are there. and You don't even have an idea what tomorrow can hold. I want to really encourage you to identify which of the three types of people you are. And this is what I like about being a former ag teacher is I get to revert back to some previous stories I've told. But I concluded after 20 years in the classroom, there's three types of people. And I'll let you decide who you are. Those three types of people are sitters, quitters, and getters. I did it because it rhymed, right? It makes sense. The people that sit are going to sit no matter what I had said to them, no matter what employer or vendor somebody's going to have to say. They sit and they watch and they late adopters and they're watching for their friends to come and go and, and that's all fine and good. But about 33% of the population will sit and watch life go by. The quitter group are already defeated. 
they're going to be there buying their time. There's not a whole lot you can say to them. But you, there's a couple of stragglers maybe you can pick up on, but really what it has motivated me over the years is the, the most important group. And I hope think that's a group of my friends and constituents that are here today. I know many of you. The Gitter Group. And the Gitter Group gets it when they can. They get it in spite of anybody that's spoken ill against them, about any injustice, anything they've ever thought was unfair, unkind. It doesn't matter. The getter gets it no matter what. And what you're doing here is understand that uh, probably the most influential person in the room, Mr. Higginson over here, has a wealth of knowledge. And he's ready to freely share it with anyone who chooses to get it. And so I really want to address the getter group. And I know many of you have maybe heard this presentation or something like it before. But I like to talk a little bit about a course you'll never see anywhere else in the world except maybe Springdale, Arkansas, and I call it chicken math. Chicken math is kind of taking a little bit of agriculture, a little bit of mathematics, and putting it together. But it's a whole lot of different numbers because your customers of your, pro, your protein don't always order the same types and quantities in the same location. So you got this endless supply of chicken coming at you and other proteins, and you got to do something with it. So I like to describe a story that I think maybe you young folks will be able to identify with, and it's this idea of a phrase that we use in lean thinking called value added. And to be value added requires three things. Number one, has to be a physical improvement to the product. Number two, the customer has to be willing to pay. And number three, for those of you that have already heard this and know, it's got to be done right the first time. So companies like Tyson Foods and other manufacturers come together to add value to their products. So I'll give you the quick chicken mass story. Today, a leg quarter might be worth 27 cents a pound. If you take the thigh and the leg apart, it's worth 30 cents a pound. Debone the thigh, it's worth 35 cents a pound. Get it blessed by a Russian Orthodox priest ready for export, it's worth 55 cents a pound. You open up to a new market in Europe or Asia with a quick service restaurant, now it's worth a dollar a pound. You partially fry it, marinate it, inject it with all kinds of different stuff that makes it really good. Now it's at $2 a pound. You put it into a microwavable container and a, an entree version of something you can poke in the microwave and push a couple buttons. It's worth two fifty dollars a pound. It's the same chicken all the way through. It's just different things have been done to it to make it worth more. And that's what you need to look at your education with. You need to come and, and realize that you graduate high school, and if you're a good, solid worker, you're worth $10 an hour. If you want to try to find a way to make yourself worth $15 an hour, then it's probably going to be education or experience. And you start putting a little, little bit of elbow grease and some sweat equity, and you really start to, to pour in some passion, and you put your heart into it, and you really care about what you're doing. And now you're worth $17.50 an hour. You stay loyal to a company, and you really find out who's got the same mission and values and ideals that you do that you want to promote for a lifetime legacy. That's where you increase. You do it in education. You do it in a skill. You do it in an aptitude. You do it in connections and relationships and communication. And everything you do, including the personality, sense of humor, and a whole lot of grace, makes you worth more than you were yesterday. And what I see in the community, and you talk about partnerships, Dr. Cleveland, what an amazing group when you can have state government, national government, our, our chambers represented, vendors, the, the strong uh, vendor community, manufacturers, folks we have in the room, all here because of the 18 and under sitting in the audience today and the ones that will come forward. You are the future, I don't have to tell you that. We're planting trees for something we may never see the shade from, but we know it's the right thing to do. And you've got to know that there's a couple of really important things, and the thing that you need to, to kind of see on this is if you want to come up with the one aspect, one skill, one ability that you can have that cannot be outsourced or offshored. Offshore is what we find whenever something is sent out to a lower paying uh, government, some type of a, an area where it's a cheaper ecosystem and they're able to, to get more done with lesser wages. You cannot outsource an offshore repair, service, insulation, diagnosis, and repair. You cannot offshore that. And that's the skill industrial maintenance has. Maintenance folks, and, and I can say this because I grew up in Springdale, Arkansas, graduated from, from Springdale, went to work for a poultry company right out of high school, worked through getting my master's degree in education, taught high school at night or during the day, taught that 20 years, worked at George's for 20 years, and put this together to realize that a maintenance technician can do a little bit of everything. And it really is, it's like the sampler platter of technical education. And so that's one of the really important things I'd like you to, to walk away with. And the last thing that is probably the most important I can do and say is to represent uh, what I like to call a faith-friendly company. 
and to know that the Lord has plans for you that you may not even know exist, either him or your, the plans he has for you. But I've seen it time and time again that your past will come back to life. And if you will live a life in seeking out what that calling is in your life, you'll be much happier and well uh, versed in making the decisions that will promote your future than anything you can do. If you don't know what to do, pray about it. If you don't know what direction to take, seek the, the Lord. Those are really important things for me to share with you. And I wanted to, to end my part with what I would consider a, a dedication of this building, if you would uh, allow me such a an opportunity. Lord, I come before you to thank you for this group of young people. Lord, for the, the people who've made this possible, for an administration at a school district that's progressive, with manufacturers and community that want to develop hard work and the honor of God that you've placed in hard work. I thank you, Lord, for the tireless effort that's unsung that people don't get recognition for and they don't get paid and compensation for it, God. They do it because it's the right thing. They do it because of the life that you give us. I pray, Lord, for a special anointing over Mr. Higgins is his instruction. I pray the same thing for the administration, Lord, over this campus and the school in schools in Springdale. Thanking you, Lord, for the love you have for us and praying, Lord, for, for favor, for grace, and for mercy as we dedicate this building to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good afternoon. My name's Rodney Ellis, and I'm Proud to be here today and just see a culmination of uh, all the planning, all the preparation, and all the partnerships. I'm going to speak about those partnerships very quickly, and then I'll finish off with uh, Mr. Higginson, let him say a few things. He's the, the main instructor here. But you also, <clears throat> within this program, you have two very unique programs. We have an industrial maintenance program, and we have a diesel tech program, which is another partnership with Springdale Schools and, and NWTI and Chip Holson standing back in the back there. And you've got two great quality instructors. And this group of students, if you'll stand up real quick, we're just gonna see who you are, the industrial maintenance students. If there's any diesel students, stand up. Okay, very good. I just want everybody to see who you were and, and what these programs are about. CHIP students are in the back. We've got the Be Pro, Be Proud trailer through the state chamber here. So we also have vendor partners who make it successful. And for industry, that's very huge. It's, it's branding. It allows students to see what they will uh, encounter in the workplace. So I've got a lot of vendor partners over here. If you guys will stand up. I've got Haas Machine. We've got MSC Industrial Supply. Stand up. Um, we've got Searcy Industrial Tools. We've also got Wellsco here, JV Manufacturing. We've got SMC Products in the back, Dave Corey, Festo Products, and the list goes on. Thank you, guys. So just to know that this is legitimate and real, Chip has a lot of those partnerships built into his programs, and that's what makes it viable to industry. And <clears throat> with those partnerships, the administrative side of the school, the, the unsung heroes, as I like to call them, um, from the get-go, you had Dr. Rollins and, and Joe Rollins, Dr. Cleveland, you also had Dr. Smith, but there's three ladies that would never tell you who they are, have been very open to us being able to work with this program, and that's Principal Kelly Bortz, Miss Amy Harrison, who was over here just a second ago, and then Kelly Williamson, she's trying to find a corner to hide in somewhere. She's a CDTE director for all Springdale schools. So I'd just like you to give them a round of applause real quickly, if you would. Thank you. So part of that openness really allowed industry to drive this program, and that's what makes it successful. It's not just about this all being Tyson, but it's about industry as a whole in the region and not only in the city. We're trying to create a workforce. You hear that technical and skill gap talk all the time that this workforce will hopefully be able to fit into that realm, right? We used to know of a jack of all trades, and then someone attached that moniker, master of none. That's not really relevant to what this is. This is a jack of all trades, a lot of different skill sets. So those partnerships um, are inevitably going to help this be successful and continue to drive it because we plan to send these students into the workforce. That's the end goal for those who stood up pathways and options. So I have an advisory council who's been a great group from the start. Um, they've given a lot of input. They continue to do that. How do they do that? They come into the classroom. They speak to the students. They do guest instruction. We do tours of facilities. 
we're actually letting them feel, touch, taste, and sense what it is that they may get into, you know, as they go out this door and they've got this skill set. So as I call your name, if um, we've got a few of us listed up here, and that's Chris Chandler, Chandler Equipment here in Springdale, Arkansas. I've got Kent Rogers of Mars Electric. Um, we also have Jeff Gibbons of JV Manufacturing, Jeremy High of Rockline Industries, and then Thomas Blodgett of Multicalf Contractors. And he's not here today, but these, these folks have been very, very instrumental in helping us not only find the right instructor, um, because if you've sat on one side of the aisle, you've received education, or you sit on the other side of the aisle and you've instructed, you realize how important it is to find the right instructor. And you heard Mike say a prayer. I pray about these a lot, and we found that person in Wes Higginson. And he's got an extensive background, uh, not only in industry, but also in a training environment over at Nuclear One in Russellville, Arkansas. So that's where he came from. And he was getting ready to retire, but he went and looked at one of these programs over at Berryville, Arkansas. And I was able to entice him and bring him into this. So we were very, very fortunate. And these guys had a, a big part of that. Um, Wes came before us with a couple of other applicants. And we all basically looked at what we were trying to accomplish in the workforce and skill set that we needed in industry. And we felt like we found that person in Mr. Higginson. So I will tell you, um, students, again, as, as Mike said, you know, I go through, I have the capacity to go into a lot of different programs and see a lot of instructors, a lot of different equipment. But you're very, very fortunate to be sitting in the environment you're in. It's one of the best in the country. And I travel all across the United States and see these programs, and I'm very proud to be able to say that from all these partnerships. So without any more um, from me, Mr. Higginson, will you come up and give a couple of quick remarks? Well, thank you, Rodney. I appreciate that. I'm extremely excited and humbled to be in this position. I love the opportunity to get to share with these young folks over here. Uh, before I do, though, I do want to thank some of the same people. I need to thank Tyson's for this facility that they've helped put this together, for Rodney's guidance and putting it together as well. <clears throat> Once you get an opportunity to tour our labs, these students are excited to share with you what they've got and what they're doing with it. I also want to thank the uh, Springdale School District. Dr. Cleveland, thank you very much for your support, as well as Kelly Bortz. Her, her and her administration are awesome, and so we have all the support that we need. <clears throat> I have to tell you, I did spend a lot of time at Arkansas Nuclear One, initially as a technician, and then I became uh, involved in training at Arkansas Nu Nuclear One and developed a passion for the training. So I, I enjoy the training environment, and what I enjoy the most here is whenever I see the students and they have that aha moment where they've lean learned something new, they've got a new skill. So I have to tell you, Lieutenant Governor Griffin, these folks here, their heart is in the right place, and uh, Mike Rogers, these are getters. And I'm, I am very, very uh, uh, proud to have them as students because they're going to go far, they're grasping it a lot, and I can't wait for them to share with you their program. Ms. Harrison's going to make her way to the stage um, just to give us instructions for the actual ribbon cutting uh, ceremony. I wanted to just take a moment to say thank you to Rodney Ellis. Um, he is on site supporting us every single day. He's checking in. Um, he's had to teach uh, me, Amy Harrison, and Kelly Williamson uh, words like MIG, TIG, and ARC. And um, he also has taught us about the purple squirrel. So if you don't know what a purple squirrel is, you need to ask him before you leave today. Um, but Rodney, just thank you for being here and supporting us um, along the way. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, so Ms. Harrison, I'm going to let you give instructions as we transition uh, to the labs. So we're going to transition from this area, um, the gym, to the industrial maintenance labs for the ribbon cutting. Um, Mr. Tom Doppy and Mr. Aurelian Senate wave. I see Mr. Doppy over here. Um, they are going to be escorting out here in just a minute. Dr. Shea Hopper is another one of the assistant principals that is unable to be here. Um, and then Ms. Kelly Williamson will be leading you down the hallway to the labs. 
Your safety is very important to us, so please wear your mask at all times and be aware of spacing. After the ribbon cutting is over, please feel free to do a self-guided tour of the maintenance um, lab and the welding side. The diesel lab is also open, so there's three bay doors that will be open that you're welcome to walk in and students will be scattered throughout to be able to give you information about what's going on in those classrooms. The Be Pro Be Proud trailer is also outside, as Mr. Ellis um, mentioned, that you may go through if you are inclined. Um, it's a simulation truck that shows students some actual real world simulators, um, diesel, robotics, and other construction equipment. Our culinary arts students who are over here on this side, which is another one of our uh, CTE programs have prepared uh, refreshments for us today. The food was donated by Haas, a Phillips company. They have um, worked hard, came up with a menu, and then boxed up the um, boxed up the uh, meals or appetizers for you to take so you can grab a box on your way out. Um, before we transition, you also have a reply card on the bottom of your program. If you would kindly fill that out for us and drop it in the jar kind of in the hallway, um, just to give us your information and then anything that you might be interested in learning more about our program. So I will have Mr. Doppy start guiding um, you down the hallway by rows. He's going to uh, exit by rows and then we will proceed to the ribbon cutting.